IT, forging IT security experts. Secure Ninja. Hey everyone, it's Alicia Webb with Secure Ninja TV. I am here with Wayne Burke. He is a security researcher, security trainer, and also author of the new SWAT course that Secure Ninja is now offering. Wayne is all the way over in Reykjavik, the capital of Iceland. Wayne, how are you doing over there? Excellent, thanks, Alicia. Awesome, great to see you. Well, it's really wonderful to be back on the scene with you, uh, you know, talking about really geek stuff. And uh, well, of course, we are on different opposite ends of the world or the pond, as you might want to call it, though. But uh, let's uh, uh, get some of this excitement out of me now, and let's start talking about this really cool SWAT stuff. Absolutely, yes. We hope to have you back in the States soon, because you are going to be teaching the new SWAT course that you've developed. And everyone is so excited about it. What can you tell us about your new SWAT course? Well, you know, first off is the name. Everybody sees this cool thing of like the SWAT, but you've got to remember that SWAT stands for Special Weapons and Tactics. And we've got to take into consideration nowadays that the newer types of hardware devices coming out, whether it be a really cool flashy USB flash drive that's a media server or mini computer or a Raspberry Pi or an Odroid, these kind of little devices are being used as almost like weapons of mass destruction because they're so small but yet so powerful than your you know, two-year-old traditional laptop was. These are almost like three or four times more powerful than those systems were a few years ago. So we're looking at developing you know, the mindset of the typical ethical hacker or the penetration tester into working with some of these latest, greatest weapons that will really ensure that you get the job done. But most importantly, that we're able to better effectively test our security of our infrastructures, whether it be for government agencies, whether it be for mission critical sensors that are monitoring the water purification plants. You're having to teach people a much higher level or higher degree of technology skills that are now required. So, you know, it's not all about the software anymore. It's about learning about all these little gizmo gadget hardware devices that look pretty ugly but can do some serious damage to your organization or your government agency. Right. So tell us about your background a little bit. What led you to learn so much about these devices and eventually develop a course surrounding them? Well, the first thing is, you know, I, I partly English, South African. I've lived in Texas for a number of years as well. So I'm one of those half breed kind of people. But, you know, having traveled the world for work purposes, but also lived in some of these countries. In Africa, I had to do my national service in uh, the South African police. And what led me to you know, moving to this area of security, first and foremost, is realizing that we need a new breed of police people out there that are able to police the digital highways. We've been looking at some of the serious politically orchestrated attacks, whether it be you know, the Egyptian government takeover, Tunisia, we were looking at um, uh, Korea, we've seen a lot of these countries that are really suffering severely cyber warfare attacks. So the war effectively on a digital highway has already started. It's not about just companies that are being hacked now, it's about governments all over the globe that are trying to get an edge on another government. So whether it be the North and South Koreans or whether it be China and the USA, we're looking at the severity of internet cybercrime as becoming a national uh, uh, issue with regards to security, you know, national security, international security, because the attacks are not like, okay, I'm going to just shoot one bullet at one target now. You can literally use the same weapon to shoot 10 targets at the same time. Uh, trying to give you an analogy when it comes to, you know, a traditional gun versus a computer, but, you know, you've got to be yeah. serious about this because there's people that are being killed because somebody's been able to control the medication they're being fed through in intensive care units. Or, you know, you in an airplane and somebody's hacked into an airplane already and landed it remotely. So these devices shouldn't be taken as, okay, these are cool little devices that you can go and check your Facebook and everything else like that, because this technology can cause severe damage and harm to one's livelihood. So Wayne, what sort of person would most benefit from taking your SWAT course? Well, first and foremost, is it's not an entry-level security course. Uh, it's advanced SWAT hacking, which means you've got to have a fair amount of background, or at least basic background, into what is computer RAM and CPUs, because we are going to be using some customized hardware devices, 
which in some instances would require you to actually solder some other components or modify it in some way. So it requires that somebody has some basic background in ethical hacking, somebody that's a certified ethical hacker already, that is now ready to step up the pace and go into really utilizing the latest groundbreaking techniques. So it's not an entry level course. It's for somebody that's more advanced, somebody that has some basic programming skills, somebody that's got some basic hardware background, and they've already got experience in security, and they need to ensure that their mission critical environment, whether it be that government agency or a bank or another kind of financial institution, they obviously have got a lot at stake if they lose any of their valuable information or their valuable digital assets. So Wayne, I can tell you're very passionate about this subject matter. What exactly was it over the years that you saw was lacking in the industry that led you to develop a course like this? Well, I think the first thing is there's so many types of certifications out there and so many programs that are out there to make money. They focus just on making money. Now, obviously, let's not you know, get it too twisted yet. Everybody needs to make money. But the focus here is to ensure that people are getting the latest and the greatest of skills. You know, without mentioning any specific names of courses, anybody that goes to some of those courses will already realize that some of the material is weeks, if not months, and even years old and outdated. So what we need to ensure that we're doing is we have to be much closer to what the malicious cyber criminals are actually doing to break into these environments. So we need to ensure we get a closer gap to be able to better protect these systems because we're using the latest tools and techniques that is as close as we can get to the skills and the, the, the tactics that these malicious folks are using. So my passion for this is we've seen that so many of these courses that are already out there are utilizing techniques and tactics that are not really effective in the real world of penetration testing, ethical hacking. They're all about making money. It's all about, you know, a really great looking brochure that looks promising, but the minute you actually step into that hotel, it's like, holy gamoli. You know, there's spider webs all over the place. The brochure looked really different compared to what we actually see inside the book or inside the hotel. And that's the biggest issue. Your know, education uh, is something that can change people's lives. You know, growing up partly in Africa, you get to see young children of two, three years of age walking on the streets without a mother or father, and the only thing that can help them in their life, which could change their life, is to improve it by giving them an education. So there's so many organizations out there that are literally looking at just throwing people in seats and hoping that they're going to enjoy the training and not worried about the quality and also ensuring that they're getting the latest and the greatest you know, of real quality education. Now, I understand your course is very hands-on. What sort of environment can a student expect when they enroll? Well, first and foremost, we've got to look at the difference between a lot of other courses, whether it be a Microsoft or a Cisco course. You typically have the PowerPoint presentation, some demonstrations in between, you know, some of the slides, and then you get to do a hands-on lab at the end. But normally those are all very well articulated in a detailed step-by-step -step procedure. Well, this is advanced SWAT. If you're thinking about some of the television programs you've seen, when you are looking at what a SWAT special agent, let's say, has to do, they are having to be prepared to respond to an incident without actually always knowing what's going to happen. So effectively, the training that we deliver is based upon a scenario. So we first of all start off with a typical example scenario where we're going to show you, okay, this is what we need to achieve. This is how we're going to achieve it. And these are the ways we're going to be able to achieve success in assessing that specific uh, area that we're concerned with. Well, first and foremost, it's scenario based. So it's not going to be detailed step-by-step -step lab instructions. You have to be taught to think under pressure and to respond to literally, uh, 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 let's say, a detection mechanism on a target system that would otherwise perhaps trigger some sort of an alarm, whether it be an alarm in, let's say, your uh, you know, skater environments, as an example, where you know, the criminals have actually broken in and we've got to be able to defend as well. So it's not all just about, you know, showing you a cool, sexy tool, you have to think outside that box and you have to think without having those step-by-step -step instructions because effectively, if you've got to be able to learn how to do something, you've got to learn how to do it outside of that book. You're not always going to have access to a book that's going to tell you exactly how you do it. So it's almost like playing tennis. Does somebody play tennis or ice hockey or drive a motor car and every now and then you know, take the eyes off the road and check the manual to see, oh, hang on a second, which button do I push to change gears? So it's that classic, rather than teaching students what to think, you teach them how to think. Correct. 
you're not you're not being taught to do a simulation. You're actually doing it real world. So to give you some more insight, it would be okay. Yeah, we're going to look at testing the security of this type of system. It's not going to be of a virtual machine that is not real. It's actually going to be of a production system that's been set up specifically for testing purposes. But it's you know mapped into what a real system uh, uh, that you're going to find on the internet. Well, Wayne, the new SWAT course sounds amazing, and we'll definitely keep all of our followers and fans updated on when your course dates will be available. So everyone at home, make sure you like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you don't miss any of our awesome interviews. Wayne, it was a pleasure speaking with you, and I will definitely be speaking with you again about some of the future courses you might have coming. Absolutely, cheers. and as they say in England, cheers, mate. Cheers, mate. <laughs> Thanks for watching, everyone. I'm Alicia Webb. Secure Ninja Shorts are brought to you by SecureNinja.com, a world leader in information security and IT training and certification. Our master instructors will help build you into a highly skilled and marketable security professional. SecureNinja.com, forging IT security experts.